to my latest review of the For Britain 2020 manifesto and today I'm going to be looking at transport. Now while this may not sound like the most exciting policy area, it actually is crucial uh, and it's one of those where you can really, common sense, again I, I, a common sense to me is the answer to most of life's problems, um, short, tough, we don't have to move mountains, none of this is brain surgery or rocket science, but these are crucial steps we need to take. So this is quite a short area, uh, policy area, but vital. So as with the other videos, I'll have a quick read through uh, and add a little bit of commentary. So, For Britain Believes, it is time to give motorists a break. Um, as some of you may know, I've only just become a motorist, and I know I look way, way too old for that. I am way, way too old for that. Um, but already I can see how expensive it is, how difficult it can be to find parking, uh, and I do, I do think it's time to give the ever-burdened motorist a break. Uh, it goes on to say, motorists are ever more burdened and owning a car is becoming ever more expensive, parking prohibitively so, and this is particularly the case in city centres. Uh, if you've ever tried to park in London, for example, uh, you'll know. Uh, if you've ever tried to park in Birmingham, Manchester, you'll know. But even in smallish towns, it's it's getting ridiculous. It's you know you you. I live in a fairly small town, and you have to pay to go to the local supermarket. It, it's, it gets a bit it gets a bit much. On the flip side of that, of course, public transport is often completely inefficient and overcrowded. Uh, again, if you've ever been on the tube in London at 8 o'clock on a weekday morning, you'll know what I mean when I say this is unhealthy. If you've ever tra travelled from northern city to northern city uh, early in the morning, you'll know what I'm talking about. This is unhealthy. We are crammed into overcrowded carts uh, and, and shipped around the country like cargo. Uh, it's got got to improve. We can't, you know, there's so much, we have a mental health crisis in this country and there are so many things adding to it and I'm sorry but this is one. Our inability to get around with ease is having a profound effect on us. So public transport must be improved particularly across the nation and between cities and what I'm largely referring to there are northern cities. Uh, trans transport between the towns and cities of the north of England uh, a mission. Uh, honestly, it's like undertaking a mission sometimes. Uh, all efforts must be made to improve services and keep commuter costs down. In 2018, rail bosses received a 6% pay rise while commuters were hit with a 3% increase in fares. I spoke about this at the beginning of the year because every January we see a rail increase uh, and every January we hear about no corresponding improvement in services. This is part of the disempowerment of the consumer that I've uh, been talking about quite a bit lately. It's disempowering to watch the money being taken out of your pocket. It's almost like the Brexit vote, isn't it? We went out and we voted and then they tried their best not to implement that vote. You feel powerless. It's the same feeling you get as a consumer when money goes out of your pocket time and time and time again and you're getting nothing it back in return. It's profoundly disempowering uh, and it has to change. Britain's taxi service must also undergo radical improvement. And this is a, a flagship policy for us. We introduced a taxi service policy last year, which was written by a taxi driver. Uh, fantastic policy. Again, none of this is rocket science. None of it requires us to move mountains. This is simple stuff. And you think to yourself, it, it, there really are simple answers to these to these issues. So why are we paying the, so many politicians so much money to not come up with the answers? Uh, Britain's taxi service must also undergo radical improvement with safety and the ability of drivers to make a decent living at the forefront as priorities. British taxi drivers are being priced out of of the of the market. You know they're already artificially low. 
the uh, price, the cost of a taxi, because British drivers are trying to compete often with illegal immigrants, uh, which is profoundly unfair, uh, but also with generally with an oversupply uh, of drivers. Licensing is an issue. Uh, Ian, uh, uh, the taxi driver who wrote this, he tells us about uh, strange numbers of licenses being given out in certain towns, uh, people get, being given license in one town and then travelling to another town to to ply their trade there. Uh, it needs regulation. It really, really does. So, for Britain, will in, increase the speed limit on motorways to 80 miles an hour. Fairly self-explanatory. Move us on a little bit. Impose speeding punishments only if the driver exceeds the speed limit by 5 miles an hour or more. Uh, that is, uh, you know, speeding laws, uh, speeding fines, etc., are not to raise money for for the local authority, but they are to keep speed in check, and it's pretty easy to go over by a mile or two. End HS2 and invest in railways. I will link to an article below that I did uh, last week about HS2. Uh, so, so, so much money. I mean, the projected costs are more than double what they were when they started into billions and billions of pounds. And it achieves so little. We could use that money. The money still, you know, the idea that it's a waste of money to stop now, we would save so much more than we've already spent. Uh, and as the projected costs keep going up, we would also avoid that. We could completely revitalise the railways across this country using the money we're wasting on HS2. It's pretty infuriating. Provide two hours free parking in town centres. Again, none of this requires us to move mountains, but this can have a profound effect. It can help small business, local business. It can help the sense of community. People are more likely to meet up in the town centre for a cup of coffee if they have free parking. These are small measures that can, re can revitalise a high street, so let's do them. Ensure all taxi drivers have been legally resident in the UK for at least two years. This is an attempt to keep illegal immigration out of the taxi service. Ensure all taxi drivers hold a licence from the UK or Republic of Ireland obtained by taking the full driving test in the UK or Republic of Ireland. That's fairly <coughs> simple to understand too. And we want a, fair, a certain standard uh, of driving ability. Ring fence road tax for use in the improvement of roads only. Again, uh, we pay our taxes for the roads, let's use them on the roads. And to this, to add to this, these toll bridges should be abolished. We're already paying uh, for our roads and in a similar vein, charge foreign vehicles for use on British roads. Ensure all taxi drivers satisfy a comprehensive DRB check, formerly CRB check, this is a criminal records check going back 10 years. And if they can't go back 10 years, they can't be taxi drivers. We want to know who is driving our taxis. Ensure all, <coughs> ensure all taxi drivers are able to speak English and pass a national standardised English test. Our, I, I think it's reasonable, entirely, entirely reasonable for people in the service industry in an English-speaking country to speak English. We must have the confidence that they can understand what we're saying. It's, it's quite difficult uh, when you're speaking to someone who's providing you a service uh, and you're, you're not you're, you're not confident that they understand what you're saying, or that you uh, that they yeah that they understand what you're saying, or that you understand uh, what they're saying, uh, and you get this you get this problem, you get this communication breakdown, and communication is key, it's crucial. So we want our taxi drivers to speak English. Finally, ensure that licensing fraud or any fraud committed by drivers in the establishment of a taxi service is punishable with a prison sentence and or deportation for non-British citizens. Uh, again, we require people to obey the law. And as I said earlier, uh, Ian, our, our, um, the chap who wrote this policy, was telling us about a hugely disproportionate number of licenses being handed out in certain um in certain local authorities, uh, which are then used by drivers to travel around the country, I said on a Friday and Saturday night, and take trade from drivers in that area. The whole thing needs looking at and needs regulation. And as I said, none of this is uh, is particularly difficult. These are simple common sense measures that will have 
a huge impact and that is the identity of For Britain. If you like these policies, if you like any of our policies, get on board forbritain.uk. Um, better yet, uh, uh, join us, join us and uh, let's take this country forward to common sense solutions. It's, it's all we need. Oh,